Hello YouTube, and now we're going to be talking about missiles again in Arena Commander version 1.3. I've done a video on this describing how things were tracking earlier. That time I think I used a sonic screwdriver with a cupcake on a uh, cupcake thingy around it. This time I'm going to use a nerf dart with uh, the suction cup part being kind of the representative of the tracker head uh, on a pen. And trusty old diecast metal Ertl aircraft here, in this case, an F-18, to illustrate my point. Now, there's been some changes to the missile and missiles dynamics in 1.3 of Arena Commander. In particular, what happens now is that missiles really do have the ability to lock on to a target after it's past its primary. And I've seen some people complaining, well, the missiles are stupid. Missiles aren't that dumb in real life. And I'm like, yeah, they are. Uh, in fact, missiles in real life are actually quite stupid. Uh, especially earlier versions during Vietnam. Uh, there was a lot of classic stories. Go look at the AIM-4 Falcon, which was a heat-seeking missile that I think out of 72 ever fired in combat, like only five ever struck their target or something like that. It, it's, its hit rate was astronomically low. But oftentimes with early, with the AIM-4 Falcons were notorious for this in early versions of the Sidewinder as well. If, let's say, that's the sun behind me there, that light up there, and you're flying trying to lock onto a missile, onto a target, and the sun was anywhere near, the Sidewinder would perform what's called a moonshot. Basically, the Seeker head would go, oh, jet exhaust, nope, going to go track toward the sun, basically go up in the air ballistic, and we would end up with what's called a moonshot. Uh, the AIM-7 missile, how the AIM-7 missile works is if you fire it, let's say from an F-15 at an F-18, you had to maintain radar lock on that contact, and then it would rain, basically ride your aircraft's radar beam. The AIM-7 Sparrow was a passively guided missile, and then connect with target. Now, the AIM-7 Sparrow did enjoy a little bit more of a success rate uh, in Vietnam and later engagements. But again, if you were forced to maneuver and break radar lock, the missile would just go off wandering off in some other direction. And additionally, the AIM-7 had the problem of they were usually rippled fired, meaning they were fired two or three at a time, as inevitably one or sometimes two would just go, whoop, fall to the ground. The rocket motors would never ignite for whatever reasons, or a fin would be locked or damaged in, in, upon roll-off, essentially. And, yeah. Again... A lot of problems with the early missiles. I think by the 80s, 90s, the Sparrow missiles employed in, say, Gulf War One. I'm not really sure that they were ever deployed much beyond that, at least in the United States, had a uh, better success rate. Uh, but 20 years ago during the Vietnam War, it was kind of like, fire two missiles and hope one of them actually fires. And even then, uh, if you ever watched the Dogfight series on the History Channel, you'll know that they're like, we fired a missile, and it didn't track. And we fired another missile, it didn't track. We fired another missile, it hit the ground. Finally, on the fourth and last missile, it tricked and hit, uh, tracked and hit the target. So that leads us to today. And in fact, in Falcon BMS, there's a video on my channel here, I'll see if I can't link it whenever I post this up on YouTube, of myself flying with Havoc, a couple other guys from ADI, in Falcon BMS. And this actually happens. Because him and another target were essentially merged on my radar scope, and I couldn't distinguish between them. So I called out whether or not he was spiked, whether I was locking him or I was locking the target. And he replied to me, no, you know, you know, basically called out ray gun, and he replied, no, you're not locking me. So I fired the AIM-120 AMRAM, and it went what's called Mad Dog, the fact that there's an actual term for this. Now, the AMRAM missile operates a little bit differently than the Sparrow. It is a radar-guided missile, but unlike the Sparrow, it also has its own radar effectively on the cone of the missile. But basically, it tracks the first half of the target, or three-quarters of the distance to the target, via your aircraft's radar beam. And then if that beam is broken or it gets to its terminal guidance phase, it turns on its own radar cone, essentially. Well... You know, if you're flying back here, or you're flying here, and there's another, let's say, a friendly target back here, and you shoot at this guy, and he dodges it, and it goes to an active radar cone, and it sees this guy back here behind him, it will go and hit friendly. 
uh, does not have IFF capabilities, essentially. Now, people are like, oh, but missiles in Star Citizen should be smarter than that, and they should have an IFF distinguisher. Possibly, maybe, I could see that argument. But, again, there's the fact that there's a NATO brevity term for this called Mad Dog um, that people need to kind of keep in mind. When you're firing missiles in Arena Commander, it's like firing a gun in real life. You need to not only be concerned about what's in front of your target and what target is in front of you, but also what's behind that target. Because much like a bullet leaving your gun, when you fire a missile from your spaceship, it's going to keep on going until it either self-destructs, runs out of fuel, or its seeker heads detect something else. And that is actually a change in the implementation. It's one of those things that I think on one power it sets to whatever target that you're locked onto, but if it misses that target and goes to reacquire a lock that is like half as powerful or something. Uh, I'm sure that there will be changes to dynamics in the missiles and stuff like that, but that's basically the big change for 1.3. And it's actually a change that I approve of. I'm not going to say that there couldn't be tweaks, there couldn't be different seeker heads and stuff like that, and then different missiles, you know, at different price points, maybe become uh, more valuable. But it's entirely possible that if you fire a missile, let's say a Sidewinder, even a modern Sidewinder at a target, and somebody else comes in front of it with a higher IR signature, it may very well go off and track that guy. So to say that missiles this day and age are smart, you know, Mm, to a certain degree. They're not as smart as I think people who hear the term smart munitions uh, are led to believe. Uh, reality is somewhat more disappointing. But at any rate, that's just kind of how missiles are performing in 1.3 and something else to consider. Basically, you know, you have to treat it like you do shooting a gun. That if you're going to shoot a target, you need to know not only, you know, that target, but what are you shooting at behind that target as well. Uh, so you don't have any type of negligent discharges. Because uh, I've flown in a few 1.3 matches on the live server, and I've, I've seen it happen because it's happened to me. I'll be shooting at a target, somebody comes in blasting missiles, missiles fail to track, and all of a sudden, incoming missile alert. I can actually watch them arc into, you know, if I'm shooting at somebody, I'm watching them go, whoop, and me having to go, uh-oh, I better strafe out of the way, or do something and pop some flaff, uh, chaff and flare, and... Hope they go streaking past me. Now, you know, eventually I hope that they make engaging with different type of missiles a little bit more, or different missiles engage in different ways, much like you do uh, engagement procedures from a Sidewinder compared to a Sparrow or an AMRAM. Uh, all three of those protocols are a little bit different. Eventually I hope that Marksman missiles, you know, you get some sort of auditory growl that, okay, now you got good tone and you fire the missile. Uh, so that instead of just saying lock on target and then it says target locked, now you're clear to fire, uh, you actually got to kind of judge that it's always passively locking. And when do you have a good tone on the target and determine is that a good point to release on the missile? And I'm sure you could do the same thing for EM, CS, uh, things of that nature. CS, I think, really should be more at like the old school Sparrow missiles <laughs> in terms of reliability and things like that. And then CIA, or uh, EM missiles, I think, could be closer to what AMRAMs would do with their own little seeker head and stuff like that. At any rate, I'm sure some of these dynamics will change and stuff over time, but I just thought I would do kind of a little bit of a video, hopefully explaining that a little bit better. Well, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you next time.